Hi, my name's Dave, and my channel content is usually around high rocks, functional fitness, CrossFit, that sort of thing. And in this week's video, I'm going to be talking you through my CrossFit training switch over to high rocks. I've got the high rocks event coming up in November, did it back in April, and I'm now going to go through the training I'm doing at the moment to try and improve my times ready for the next event. So if you've done a high rocks event before, luckily you get horrendous amounts of statistics. Uh, you wear the timing chip on your, your leg when you're doing the event, and every split is counted, you know, the time you enter a station, the time you come off, how long it took you to the one kilometer runs, it's all available for you to download. And here's mine. So using all that information from the stats from High Rocks, you can then go to The Rocks Life's excellent website, and I'll include a link below. So on The Rocks Life's website, you can go in there and download this spreadsheet. You can put in your figures, and I've downloaded the spreadsheet, which is for pre-85 um, minutes. So everybody who completed the workout there were a man in the open category uh, under 85 minutes you can then put your times in and it will tell you with a bar chart to show you where your sort of weaknesses are and strengths uh, compared to the slowest fastest and average times and you can see here's my stats you can see exactly where you're going wrong uh, some of them i already knew anyway or most of them i already knew but it's just good to get it all confirmed and seen on the screen. My previous time back in April was an ego destroying one hour 35 minutes. Um, if you've watched my previous video, which I'll link up below, um, a lot of that was, well not a lot of that, but some of that was down to me stupidly doing things in the wrong order and then spending some couple of minutes trying to resolve it with judges about what I was supposed to be doing. And then my head dropping and going down and my mindset not being up to scratch for the remainder of the workout because I knew I'd got a penalty and I knew my time wasn't going to be that much good. I also had a cold the week leading up to High Rocks so that might have had some bearing on it but I felt alright the day so we're not really sure. Uh, but I think my natural time without penalties would have been about the 129, 130 mark and, and then I can see straight away looking at the Rocks Life's um, spreadsheet information looking at my footage of my videos exactly where I went wrong. So looking at all the information available, I think my target time should be an easily achievable one, one hour 25, but my actual time I'm looking for is probably a one hour 20. Um, that'll be a, a, a nice gain on last time round with the train I'm gonna be putting in, so we'll only have to wait and see on the day. The target time of one hour 20 would have pushed me up about 14, 15 places on the leaderboard if you take out my penalty as well. So, um, that, in, that was in my previous age category, which is 50 to 54. Since then, I've had a birthday. Unfortunately, I'm now 55. Um, so I'm gonna be in a, the later age category, which is a 55 to 60 category. I'd show you, but I'm too old. I think a podium's still gonna be out of reach, even with a faster time. Unfortunately, High Rocks is an evolving sport. It's quite new. Um, as people do more and more High Rocks, they're all gearing their training up specifically to High Rocks and those times are going to tumble over the, over the years as more and more people are doing high rocks as well. Um, so I don't think a podium's achievable, but I'm, I'm aiming for top 10 and I was 18th last time, so that'll be a great improvement. You might think going up into the older age category that the times are going to be slower. Unfortunately, that's not the case. In fact, the, the man who won the age category 55 plus uh, back in April, his time was actually five minutes faster than the man who won the uh, 50 to 54 category. So it is still really competitive up there. So looking at the spreadsheet and looking at these videos, you'll see straight away burpees is one of my um, issues or was definitely one of my issues. I've since tweaked my technique completely. Um, what I was doing before was I'd watched Jade Skilling's um, excellent videos and her recommendations on not pushing too hard on the, on the jumps and not doing massive jumps and things like that. I think I took it far too uh, implicitly and went the exact opposite way. So I was doing little playground hopscotch jumps. He's skipping! Um, ri ridiculous, because I have to do probably three times more uh, burpees than other people. Um, my technique was horrendous. I was sort of lowering my arms and, and I get my arms on the floor. My knees are bent, then pushing my knees out to do another movement, then dropping to the floor and then the reverse coming back up. Um, looked at myself on video and thought, oh my God, what was I doing? And, and now what I do is as I drop, before my hands hit the floor, I shoot my legs out and I literally just drop my whole body. And so it's, it takes out probably a half of the movement um, events and you just hit the floor and just get back up again. And it's miles quicker. Coupling that with a, a longer jump, not a massive all out jump, but a, a, you know, a, a much bigger jump than last time. I'm gonna have to do less movements. So I think I'll be able to take quite a lot of time off my um, splits for that event anyway. Next up, 
was the definite low hanging fruit there, which is the running, or should I say in my case, the shuffling. Um, my splits were all over the place last time, five minutes, uh, sorry, five minutes seven, I think was the fastest split, which was the very first one where you all just get bundled along and get caught up in the run. And then I think my slowest one was about seven minutes and that was the last run of the, of the event. Um, I would have thought that, I, I think my head was down, my mindset was going because I knew I was gonna get a slow time and, and I was just sort of plodding through the run. And so I could easily get a minute or two there in just that one split. Um, I'm doing quite a lot of running training, so I'm doing a, a long run per week now, a 10K-ish run, um, just a slow, steady run. Um, been doing some interval running, um, actually out on the roads and on treadmills to, to improve my speed, and that's been working really well. And then like another sort of mid-range 5, 6K run uh, in there as well. So, And I'll probably do a little bit more running, even more so as I get much closer to the event uh, to get my running speed up. And I'm aiming for a sub five minute pace on every split from that point. So I want to get them more consistent because like I say, 5 hours 7 to 7 hours something, I think, was my splits. I want to get them all bundled around the five minute mark. If you look at the really good um, um, elites, uh, their times are much more consistent uh, than, than anyone else. They, they, you know, they sort of have a pace in mind and they stick to it rigorously through every single split. So that's what I want to try and do is try to maintain a split time rather than been all over the place. So that's a low hanging fruit, the uh, the burpees and the running. Uh, but I've also got, if you look at the stats, the, the weighted lunges weren't very fast. So I'm working on those now. Um, sled push and the wall balls. Well, the sled push, I've completely changed my technique. I think I've mentioned this in another video, but basically I was doing an outstretched arm routine with my elbow, weird elbow, where I can't strain it fully. That's a bit strange. I, I'm putting more stress on one side of my body to compensate, I think. And the, and the sled doesn't go perfectly straight, it slowly but it really veers off, and then you're having to correct it. Um, you obviously can't breathe as well either because you, your head's down, your diaphragm's constricted, so you get that issue. I've tested uh, a few times since then uh, that, that close-in routine where you can actually get the, the bars of the sled and hold it right in. The, the sleds are supposed to be new this year, um, globally, so that's gonna be interesting to see what sort of sled pattern, what, what it actually looks like, if it works the same as everything as before. Shouldn't be much of a difference, but um, hopefully that holding it in tight routine um, is gonna be much faster for me and, and get the sled moving back and forwards and improve my time. My farmer's carry showed as a really slow uh, routine for the Echo one, but that's not because it was slow, it's because the penalty for doing all the events in the wrong order uh, got added onto the farmer's carry. So the three, there's a three minute extra time in there that wasn't really part of the farmer's carry. So I did the farmer's carry in a couple of minutes, really. I've since tested it because I did put the farmer's carry kettlebells, kettlebells down halfway through. I can easily do um, the 200 meters, I think it is, uh, without putting them down. So I won't be doing that next time. I'm just gonna be getting through as quick as I can. The less time under tension, so the quicker you do it, less time under tension, the more you, you can get on with the next event. So yeah, that's my plan for that event from now on. Quick diversion, regulars can skip ahead. If you're not a subscriber, and there's plenty of you out there watching my videos, unfortunately, uh, please go down below and hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, hit the like. Um, I've got a little target. My first target in, in YouTube is obviously to get to 100 subscribers. So help me out, go down below and subscribe and get me there. So I'm onto training. Uh, I know what my weaknesses are, I know what my strengths are. I obviously want to train my weaknesses, but at the same time, I don't want to lose my strengths. So it's, it's hybrid training, but with more concentrated emphasis on what I'm doing wrong, not what I'm doing right. I went on Hyrox's website uh, and unfortunately, they've done a big revamp recently over the last three or four weeks. And there used to be a link on their website where you could download a free, I think it was either an eight or a 12 week PDF training plan of how to train for Hyrox. It's obviously not tailored to your weaknesses. It's just a generalized training plan, but I was gonna use that as a base uh, first. Unfortunately, that's no longer there. That training plan is gone. Um, it looks like Hyrox have gone into bed with a company called FIIT um, who do training um, apps and training uh, website. It's a bit like Peloton. Um, it, I tried it, I signed up for the trial to see what it was like and so you guys know what it's like and it's not for me. It's, it's one of these Americanized Peloton type training systems where there's an instructor on screen hyping you and screaming at you to try and get you to do the workout. It doesn't really feel like a high rocks workout. It's more like a strength and conditioning workout that FIIT has bundled together as a training plan to make it high rocks. Um, I signed up for the free trial. I can't remember how much it actually cost. Um, I'll include it up above. But um, 
yeah, I, I tried the free trial, had a quick look, not for me, uh, unfortunately, so I canceled my trial and bin the app. I then got a recommendation from Mark Lewis. Um, you obviously know who he is, because if you're following me, you're bound to be following him, but if not, I'll include a link to his channel above. But um, Mark Lewis recommended a guy called Dave Peters from Rumble Fitness, and they're a, a High Rocks affiliated gym. And, and obviously the guys there know a bit more about High Rocks, I would have thought, than any standard gyms. Um, he does a training plan, so I've been chatting back and forwards with him. Obviously I've got the benefit, or the negative if you like, of the, I've got the footage of me doing all the things wrong. So he can look at that. Uh, he's gonna work out a training plan based on my weaknesses um, to lead me up until uh, High Rocks in November. And so he hasn't actually finished that yet, so I'm, I, this week's training is basically my training, so no experts written this. This is purely from out of my weird head. Um, but yeah, I'll be getting that training plan sometime this week, I would have thought, and then I can work forward using that. All I want for a training plan really is basically something I can download to my phone, I can go to the gym, it tells me do this, 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 and this. I can log my time, my reps, my weight, whatever I've, I've done, so that in future weeks I can go back to that um, program and I can see, oh yeah, Last time I did this, I did it in this time, and I've done it faster, so I am definitely improving. I just wanna see some metrics so I can see I've gone from there to there, and I know I'm going in the right direction. So from here on in, this training is all out of my head. I know expert. If you wanna do it, fine, feel free. It ain't gonna hurt you, but uh, it's not geared to anybody in particular. It's just, I know that High Rocks is a long endurance event, so I did some endurance type workouts that were geared towards High Rocks. We did a sort of simulation, a scale back simulation of High Rocks some running and, and pull push type workouts. So they're just things that I did for this week until I got a proper training plan. So going back to Saturday last week, the first thing we did was a scaled back version of, of High Rock. So we did uh, same events in the same order, but scale back weights or, or distances or whatever. So the runs were all 300 meters instead of one kilometer runs. Um, the ski and the row events were 250 meters instead of one kilometer. Uh, we had 80, 80 kilograms loaded on the sled, plus the weight of the sled, so about 110, something like that maybe, um, and kept it on the sled for push and pull, uh, just for simplicity, because obviously in a, in a normal gym you haven't got just plenty of sleds lying around to have different weights on, and one with a rope on and one with air and things like that. Um, the kettlebell carry, um, stupidly, in the fog of the workout, I picked up two kettlebells, took them outside, thinking they were 24s, started doing the, the, the run with them and then realized I'd actually picked up two 32s <laughs> instead. I'd had a bit of a Freudian slip and thought I was going for pro. Um, so they were heavy and um, I had to drop them halfway, but I did do um, 150 meters, um, 75 meters down, dropped that kettlebell, shut my arms out and then ran back again. So yeah, it was interesting to do it with 32s, I think. I uh, did 40 meter sandbag carries with a 20 kilogram sandbag. Um, I need to improve my capacity there because I could do sort of half of it uh, full strides and then the second half I was doing the sort of half steps you do where you, you sort of get your legs together and then step out, get your legs together, step out. And um, so I want to work up to be able to just do consistent strides. Uh, and then we did uh, 40 meters of burpee broad jumps because the gym was quite busy. People were uh, um, practicing for team events for the Arnold Fitness, Fitness game, so there was gymnastic ramps in the middle of the uh, thing, so we didn't want to get any of these ways, so that's all we did. And then I finished with um, 50, 60 kilogram wall balls to finish. Um, you'll see the video, it's, um, it was quite interesting, it was good for my daughter to go through because obviously it's the first run through of the distances and things like that, so we're just scaling up from there. Uh, we paced it, and yeah, I think oh, on the wall balls, um, the, the technique I had in on, the, on the previous videos was, I would catch the ball, the ball would come down to here, and then I'd squat down, and obviously the squat down, you actually pivot slightly, and so the weight actually comes out, so you feel it all on your shoulders and your arms. Um, I looked at a video of myself and thought, oh my God, what am I doing? And daughter pointed out as well, that instead of like dropping the ball right down to here, keep the ball up here by your face, and then when you squat down, the ball doesn't tend to roll forward as much. It's so much more easy. Um, and just by doing that made a massive difference to my wall wall. So um, there's definitely a tip there that whenever you're doing any workouts for High Rocks, film yourself on your camera, on, on a phone, uh, you know, anything that you've got available to, to film, and then look at it later, later back and, and see straight away what you're doing wrong. You know, compare your technique to somebody who's doing it right. <laughs> compare your technique to somebody who's doing it fast. 
and then see what they're doing differently and adjust as necessary. So as I said, it was just a pace workout, um, first run through for my daughter to do it. We finished in just over 36 minutes, so you know, there's a target for you if you want to do the same sort of workout. Um, got to get my daughter, uh, I've got a, obviously a Garmin Fenix, um, a heart rate monitor strap as well to go with it. Um, my daughter's done nothing at the moment, so we need to get her something like that. Uh, it's one of the few things, a few weaknesses she's got at the moment is the, the running. So um, if she can see a heart rate, she better start doing zone running and see how much she's actually pushing herself to get into the feel of that. Trying to understand which sort of heart rate monitor to go for. I obviously don't invest a huge amount of money uh, initially, just in case it doesn't get used a lot. Um, I've seen my zone out there, I've seen Garmin, uh, Fitbit and things like that. Um, if you use one of them, um, leave me a comment down below on what, on what you use and you know if it's good for you, so I can decide which one to get for her. Sunday was just a rest day, so um, did nothing really, a bit of stretching and that was about it, uh, and a kind of walk. On Monday, it was a bank holiday here in the UK, um, so I went off and did a, a 10K, um, very steady zone two run. Uh, wore my water pack, because I'm trying to get used to that, to use that for high rocks in November, um, and that works a treat, that's a Mark Lewis tip for you. Um, and um, yeah, luckily the, the weather here was phenomenal, the sunset was incredible. Uh, I did it obviously later on in the day uh, when it's a bit cooler here in the UK because we've been in such hot weather, you didn't want to do it and get like wiped out by the heat. Um, on Tuesday, I, I did a deadlift um, PB test just to see, it, obviously there's a lot of lifting and grip things that are, are in high rocks, um, farmer's carry for instance and things like that. And so I thought I'd just test that as, a, as part of my workout. Um, I did a deadlift of 155 kilograms, um, my technique wasn't bad, it wasn't good either. I, I sort of pivot forwards before I actually start the pull for some reason. And again, film your, film your workout because it's great to look back on and say, okay, that's what I was doing wrong, that's how I can improve. I followed up my um, deadlift test with a, a, like a, a, a routine. It was a 45 minute time capped um, AMRAP. And that was a 600 meter run, a 500 meter ski, 600 meter run. 150 meters of unbroken farmer carries with two 24 kilogram kettlebells. I've got the right weight this time. And uh, 20 wall balls with a nine kilogram ball, so the heavier ball. Took it slow and steady. I did in the end two full rounds and I just finished the farmer's carry on the third round. So again, if you want to go through the workout and beat me, which you should be asked quite easily, then uh, that's the time I was doing it in. Uh, Wednesday, it was an active recovery day and mobility. As I get older, mobility becomes more and more key. Um, my hips are so tight. Um, I feel it in squats, I feel it in the wall balls, uh, particularly. And so I've been doing a lot of mobility to try and help with that. So Thursday, I decided to do some intervals on the curve runner. So there's maybe a runner one of these for it, it's an assault runner. Um, it's a treadmill without a motor, uh, is the easiest way to describe it. So it, it shapes like this and you sort of run about two thirds of the way forward uh, where the slope is and, and actually the action of your feet landing and the weight of your body pushes the, the treadmill to start moving and I, I assume it's some sort of like flywheelie type thing inside, I don't know. Um, but basically the faster you do your cadence, your strokes if you're running, uh, the faster the treadmill turns. The only problem is obviously if you start, start slowing down the treadmill's got some sort of um, momentum going for it and it'll carry on pulling you a little bit. Um, it's quite hamstringy when you run it, so it does feel completely different to running on a, on a motorized treadmill. Um, whether it's better or not, I'm not sure, but it, they're definitely a, a new trend in the um, fitness market nowadays, and our gym's got one luckily, so I decided to do some treadmill um, intervals. Yeah, so ours is an assault runner. Um, never really used the, uh, the control panel right before the display, but I couldn't figure out how to do um, a run and then a recovery, so what I wanted to do was uh, a two minute run, followed by a 30 second slower paced recovery, and then two minute run, and the same again 10 times. Uh, it only seemed to have work or rest, and when it rested, nothing was, you know, it wouldn't clock up anything, so I didn't want, I didn't want to do that, so I ended up having to do two minutes faster run, 30 seconds off the assault bike, off the assault runner, sorry, completely resting, and I did that for 10 rounds. Um, I was trying to maintain a fast pace on the two minutes, so using it like interval training, so trying to boost my pace up, so I was trying to maintain a round the four and a half minute pace. It sounds quite easy, but on, a, on an assault runner, your pace fluctuates so much. It, gets, it, it probably took me four or five rounds before I got to the point where I could sort of consistently keep my pace within sort of 10 seconds of where I wanted it to be. Um, I finished off 
after the um, all the intervals and I was trying to maintain an average of 4.30 and I managed to get 4.32 as my average pace throughout the turnaround. So I was chuffed a bit to that. Um, obviously that's 30 seconds, 28 seconds faster than what I'm trying to aim for uh, on the event, but without any workouts and smaller distances. So yeah, I'm gonna be working my way up to doing longer workouts like this with longer distances to, to give me an idea of how it works. As I said in my previous video about the Wad Proof app and rowing and technique and things, look above. Um, the Wadproof app also allows you to record a workout and superimpose and overlay the information from the uh, Concept2 range of rowers, skiers and, and bike ergs onto the screen of the video. So here's the video I did. Uh, I did a 5k row and basically I was just trying to uh, um, keep in a certain pattern, try, trying to follow the technique I'd learned in the last video about how to row better uh, and maintain a stroke rate. Uh, so yeah, here's the video of that. So you can see on the video that the, the calories, the strokes per minute, um, even my heart rate, I was wearing a Garmin uh, HRM Pro, and so that strap also talks to the Concept2, which then gets talked back to my, my phone. Uh, and so it all gets superimposed on the screen, so you get a really good idea of how well you were doing in the workout, and whether you were actually doing a good technique, because you can see it, and see the stroke, and see the power generated, and all that sort of, all at the same time. Friday, uh, real life gone the way a bit here, had quite a lot of things to do uh, outside of training, so in the end, I had to take it as a rest day. Saturday, yeah, I know the eagle-eyed amongst you now will have be thinking, wait a minute, this is supposed to be a one week of training, so that would have been Saturday to Friday, but obviously, we didn't train on Friday, so I'm taking Saturday as a, the day I would have trained, so, it's eight days of training. Um, my daughter and I decided to go for a, a trail run. We're quite lucky, we live by a, a place called Woodby Common and it's a really nice open air space, hilly, um, different types of uh, terrain to run over. So yeah, we went out for, we aimed to go sort of for a 5k-ish run, but over all different types of terrain. Uh, went out with Oscar there, Cockapoo, and um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, Again, it's good for my daughter to get out and get more running under her belt. Um, we took out our dog Oscar. Uh, he was off, off the lead because you, you can let your dogs run free up there. And um, he kept vanishing off into undergrowth and coming back out later on, a bit wetter. And then managed to find some sort of quagmire of mud somewhere that was black. Ran into the undergrowth, came back out with what looked like black Wellington boots on. Uh, so when we got back after the run, I uh, had to spend a lot of time bathing him, getting him all clean before my wife saw him. Okay, so hope you enjoyed my insight into my week's training for Hyrox. Like I said, I'm no expert here. I've just purely used some information that's available online. Use my footage of my last um, workouts and my stats from my last workout uh, to try and prime what I'm gonna be training for to improve my time for the next one. Hopefully, as soon as I get Dave Peters' training plan, I'll be on that. I'll do a future review of, of um, how my training's going based on uh, the training he's gonna provide. And, and we'll see where I go from there. Let me know down below in the comments, uh, what are you doing for training for High Rocks? Um, what training plan are you using? Uh, any hints and tips? I'm, I'm all ears on anything that'll help me improve my time. On to the future. Um, in a couple of weeks time, uh, we're going to the Arnold Fitness Games. Uh, not competing or anything, we're just going there purely for the day. I'll grab a load of footage for you guys. Um, my local CrossFit gym that we're uh, members of, uh, they've got a team that's going to compete. They've got a, a, a CrossFit license event on Sunday, and so we'll get some footage of that as well. And so if you're there, we'll see you there. Matt Fraser and Tia Claire Toomey are supposed to be there on the Sunday as well. Um, so that's gonna be interesting. If we see those, I think my daughter will literally explode. Um, and I think even Arnold Schwarzenegger might be there on Sunday as well. I'll be back. See you in the next video.